Hey guys, finally got around to getting and trying some new art supplies. So in this video, I want to share them with you because I think I may have found some new favorites. Alright, let's begin with the sketchbooks. I stocked up on a few brands because I want to conduct a little experiment. I purchased these three brands, two that I'm familiar and have used before, just not these specific series. One of these is very smooth paper and the other has a little bit more of a grain. As someone who works in multimedia, I think I'll definitely be separating it from drawing and painting now. This is a new brand that I've discovered. It seems to be awesome. I ordered from multiple stores, but Jackson sold the C White journals. They're much more affordable than a lot of other sketchbooks, but the reason why I got that size is because I've been working in this sketchbook by handbook. I have like three pages left, but I designated it for drawing and it's great to just put in your bag. But I kind of fell in love with the little square size, so I decided to try it in a different brand. So I'll definitely be testing testing out this other paper. Now the very first ever sketchbook brand that I've ever tried and filled are these moleskin sketchbooks. I really, really love them for drawing and ink and pencil. There's just something about the paper that is really enjoyable for drawing specifically. So I'm pretty excited after many years of now drawing in them. I think I'm just constantly trying new brands to see how I feel. Now also coincidentally, I really enjoyed the prices of the Sea Whites. For now, I'm pleasantly surprised with the first impressions. I'll let you guys know when I try the actual paper. But the first thing I always do is check the spine, make sure that it lays flat. And you just gotta get excited about it. There's something really nice about opening a sketchbook and really enjoying and liking the way it feels in your hands. This larger square size looks incredible and little did I know that I accidentally ordered this ginormous sketchbook. I had no idea it was this big, but for some reason I was drawn to it the most. It's practically a third or a fourth of my whole height. It's super cool. Check it out. I can basically hug this sketchbook. Definitely the biggest I've seen, but I'm really excited to try these all out. With every haul, I love to find new books to get inspired by. Not only do new art supplies inspire me, but also books always inspire. And I always like to grab new books with different categories. I found this flower book that I'd love to use as little inspiration for another 100 challenge. I'm really excited about it. It's a perfect little size and a beautiful little book. Up next, I purchased this palette perfect book. You know that I love my Color Harmony palette book. Many of you guys are asking how I use it and apply to my art, but I'll try to make a video on that. What drew me in with this one is that they actually give you examples of different artists and how they use it in their graphic design, photographs, illustrations, and more. And I'm really excited to add that one to the little collection. This next book I purchased about two months ago actually, but it's brand new and laying to be used. I've been trying to find the perfect moment to begin. Random coincidence, I go online and everyone's doing it, so maybe I'll take you guys on this whole journey and do a little series here on YouTube. I've heard remarkable results and I'm definitely eager to try out this challenge. Whenever purchasing books, I always like to work on all areas of my life because I found that improving my personal self and my life has improved my art and creativity as well. This next book is incredible. I've been reading it almost every day. It's been sitting on my kitchen table. Throughout the haul, you'll see some new watercolors I purchased. Leveling up my watercolors has been a new goal of mine, so I've been reading this to try to push it to the next level, and I've been really enjoying the way the author explains everything in the book. Staying curious and looking for ways to improve will always be the motto. This next one is actually just a journal. I've been journaling every day and I love the format of this one. Your journal is the most forgiving, safe space there is. So when I saw this, it was just perfect. I thought it was super beautiful. I love the simplicity of it, the little gold foil. And just like my sketchbook, my journal is my happy place. 
On to our next category, I categorize these as handhelds. So I tried new brushes. I actually have been loving the Princeton brand. But first, let me share these watercolor pencils that I've actually been using just to draw as colored pencils. These three shades have been my favorite so far. I know I have the option to dilute them with water, but I've actually been liking to keep it the way it is. And I did find a little bit of a different but enjoyable consistency rather than just colored pencils. A new favorite, I haven't been able to stop using this Uniball Air Pen. I'm obsessed just like I'm obsessed with suddenly drawing cats. <laughs> I've just been taking this pen onto the beach and drawing from location. It's the perfect little setup and super portable. Speaking of portable, this new fountain pen I decided to pick up. Perfect to take on location. It's a little compact and I love the way that it looks. The nib is actually relatively thicker and I took it to the beach. The ink that it came with is a really nice little blue color. Here are some quick gesture sketches I made. This was my first impression and test on the fountain pen and I quite enjoyed it. I'll definitely be picking up a converter so that I can put waterproof ink in there as well. So I was taking a look at my brushes and I happen to only have one Princeton Select brush. This is the color of the bristle. You can see the difference. One is a bit older and one is new. And the other is a Aqua Leap brush. One more for the collection, which we'll try later in this video. All right, and before we move on to the next category, a quick word from our sponsors, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to grow your website, your business. Their award-winning templates allow you to have a fully customizable site. You can create different pages and different links. And I actually created a little page with buttons, so it's nice and easy for you to jump to any links quick. And from some of the supplies I show in the art hall, they'll show up in my Amazon store, which I link through my Squarespace site as well. You can get really creative with your layouts. Building out my site on my own actually allowed me to practice some graphic design skills. And I can't stress enough how much I love how mobile friendly they are. If you're ready to start your website, to build your portfolio or your shop, head over to squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head over to squarespace.com forward slash jesscarp for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Palettes. So here are some three different sizes that I decided to go with. This is one that I already had. I just cleaned it out and got it ready to be filled up. But I really like this size. I feel like it fits the perfect amount of colors. As you can see, my old palette, which really needed to be replaced. All of the tins are scratched up. I just use it to store some half pans now. I really haven't purchased a palette since the last time we filled it together, which was a few years ago. So yeah, it's totally time for an upgrade. But I'm really excited for this one because I'm thinking to have a nice palette that I keep at home. And I actually ended up finding a similar palette, just even larger to keep in the studio. I'm thinking of experimenting to fill it up with gouache and allowing it to dry. But oh, am I in love with all of that mixing area. We'll see, maybe we'll do a video of filling it up together. Okay, and I am so excited for this little tiny sketchbook. I know we already went over the sketchbook category, but this is a little watercolor sketchbook. And the reason why it's in the palette section is because I now have this tiny little box, perfect little mini tiny travel palette. How cute. And basically you can attach it right into the sketchbook with a little clip. And I feel like this is as little and as portable as it's gonna get. I'm already brainstorming in a little series and to test this out. I also wanted to get a little bit of a bigger version and I thought this would be the perfect size for the little square format. The little magnets hold it together and I feel like it's a really sweet design. I may be late to the party because I see this going around a lot on the internet, but I couldn't help but find it on Etsy and take a look at it myself. I love how it just fits in this little pouch and I think it's the ultimate compact option. Definitely really, really excited about these. When I find a brand or colors that I like, I rarely buy new ones or ever change. But with this haul, guys, I grabbed colors and brands that I have not tried before in watercolor and pigments that I would never purchase. I did some research and know these brands are super popular, but I guess I sometimes feel guilty getting new things. I don't know. We got to change that mindset. It is my birthday month, so I decided it's okay to treat yourself. I laid these out, categorized them by brand, and I also got these little clips. I have a new experiment that I want to try colors that are a little bit more muted, something completely different than what I'm used to. So maybe this palette will sit at home and be kind of like a new inspirational palette. 
and we don't swatch much on this channel but I'm really itching to see what these look like. Most are convenience colors but hey, something's telling me this will be great. This has been my recent watercolor journal and as you can see I'm really into bright colors and my current collection is a lot of bright mixing colors. There's not that many but ever since I put this palette together it's been my go-to. I haven't changed it but I feel like it's time to swatch out some new ones so I organize them into different shades. I'm definitely not one to order greens or grays or blues and it's going to be my first time trying out any of the granulating shades. Since I don't really know what the actual pigments look like, I just eyeballed it and tried to get a nice little organized row ready. There are about 30 pigments, so I decided to put them in order and I'll have these little plates ready so that I can swatch out and two cups for water to keep it extra clean. So let's begin with one that looks like a gold honey candy. If you've been following the channel in my alphabet series, I dabbled a little bit with some gold paint in my painting of the king and the queen, and the only gold that I had was a gouache, which was great, but I wanted to get something a little bit lighter in watercolor, so I found these handmade ones by A. Gallo, and it's quite beautiful, it's not too overpowering, and it shimmers lovely. Oh my gosh, this next green gold was so vibrant and beautiful. I tried to add a little bit more pigment so that we can see how it looks a little darker and lighter. But I was already jumping off my seat and we just have only swatched two. Now I'm wondering why I don't make enough time to swatch more often. I've never tried the Jackson's brand, but this is a lovely Naples yellow. And now we're gonna try Holbein, which I also have never tried before. Am I late to the party here? <laughs> this pigment is called Yellow Gray by Holbein Watercolors. It was a beautiful autumn color, perfect for fall time, kind of like a mustardy yellow. And as I was swatching out the different brands, I was actually paying attention on the way they dried, their consistency, and just how they laid onto the paper. Naples yellow reddish was a lovely little skin tone and I also grabbed the gouache version of this because I think it'll be great for highlights. Up next is Shell Pink by Holbein. This was a really soft and light pink. I can see myself doing like base layers with this tone. Okay, now this is my first time trying the granulating colors by Schmincke. This is Tundra Rosa. Immediately after starting to paint with it, the colors just started moving around and you see some pinks and blues go through. This was like magic to me. I had to put my nose so close to the paper because I was just in shock. The camera also doesn't pick it up as well, but in person, it's absolutely astounding. And then I swatched this next color by Rembrandt and I immediately fell in love. This pigment is called Dusk Pink, but it granulated so beautifully with some purples, magentas. And if you see Tundra Rosa drying, it looks like a galaxy. The only watercolor brand that I've used was Daniel Smith, and this pigment that I swatched was the first Primatech that I've tried, which is their granulating line. The Minnesota Pipestone Genuine is gorgeous. I've been really drawn to these browns and sienna colors. Daniel Smith's Burst Sienna Light is going to be a nice little bright orangish color and the Lunar Red Rock, it seems a little close to like a Venetian red, but also a beautiful reddish pigment. Paraline Violet by Schmincke is next. This was such a lovely bold color. Any paraline pigment for me, especially with gouache, I always love to mix those for shadows. Bloodstone Genuine and also the Primatech line Daniel Smith such a beautiful granulating line. I think I'm in love, guys. This makes me want to paint like moody night scenes with lovely skies and stars. And I have to truly say that as I was swatching these, I didn't expect myself to get so inspired to paint. Like all I wanted to do was stop what I'm doing and begin a painting. And I think I've learned that discovering new things and discovering new pigments can clearly be a great source of inspiration as well. 
think these top three right selection of grays that I chose are perfect. It's not typical to order grays, especially in watercolor, but I can see them being really great undertones and base layers. Can't wait to experiment with that. I've said it before, but I've always used bright colors in my pieces, and it was pretty strange at first to swatch out such muted but yet beautiful darker tones. This is my first Roman Schmal, I believe that's how you pronounce watercolor, and I think it's a lovely Vivianite. And the one beside it is Schminke's Paraline Green. Mixing the Paraline Green with the Paraline Violet will create a beautiful shadow tone. And these last ones, I couldn't handle it. They were just so deep and lovely and beautiful. I'll let you guys watch the swatching process and take it all in. Okay, here they are. Look at these lovely colors and how they dried. That dusk yellow on the bottom is just so exquisite. The antique gold just showed through so beautifully when it dried. I think it's a very fine, subtle gold, which I love. I'm trying to pick a favorite, but oh man, this was a hard one. I really got in the zone swatching these and just fell in love. These paints and colors definitely evoke a certain emotion and it was super cool to see how they dried differently, especially some of the granulating colors when they really settled and showed through. And I'm really pleasantly surprised, I think they look really great as a group. So this is it for the new pigments that I purchased. These are all the swatches. Let me know if you're interested on a painting with these or even setting up a new watercolor palette. Now I'm really curious to get my dot cards out and swatch out all the other colors and see what they look like. I had no clue I'd be so inspired by new pigments and I'll definitely be making more time to play with color. Some other little fun things that I got are these High Flow Acrylics by Golden. I use their regular acrylics, but this actually comes with this marker thing you could fill up. This will go for my larger paintings, and I think this will be really fun to use as grounds. There are also smaller markers in there too. I really want to try this fluorescent pink as a background like I did with my seagulls in one of my oil painting videos. And I'm also really excited to try out this frog tape. Apparently, I researched that this tape actually does not have any bleed through in terms of the acrylic paintings. And one of my favorite surfaces for acrylic or oil are the clay boards. This is a cradled version and they also have a thinner, more flat version. I definitely want to create more finished pieces coming soon. So I just got some new surfaces, especially when they're on sale. We love that. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll have everything linked below for you to check out. I hope you learned something new today, maybe got inspired yourself, and just thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here, thank you for supporting. Subscribe to the channel for some awesome new announcements coming up. Stay creative and stay curious, and I'll see you soon.